Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi Masechet Sota, we are up to Perik Gimel Mishnah Hey. Today's Mishnah should be Le'irun Nishmat Neria Ben Svetlana Ranbai Veliyahu Ben Burcha Yisrael of Chanabad Miriam Sason Ben Raya and Yoshua Ben Shifra Menuchatam Began Eden Amen and Le'avdi Ben Chaim Le'chaim V'derefua Sheremav Daniel Shalom Ben Roza Betoch Shachol Yisrael. The previous Mishnah stated that merit can delay the punishment of a guilty sota. This Mishnah cites a different view. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Rabbi Shimon says, En zechutola b'mayim amarim, merit does not delay the punishment caused by the bitter water. Rather, if the sota is guilty of adultery, she dies immediately. Vimata omer zechutola b'mayim amarim, this must be so. For if you say that merit delays the effects of the curse-causing water, you will make the fear of the water fade from the minds of all women who have to drink it because they will they will rely on their merit to survive and they will continue to deny their guilt. Also, you will slander the women who are not defiled and drink the water and survived. Because people will say that they were defiled but their merit delayed their death for them. Now the next Tana answers these arguments. Rabbi Omer, Rabbi says, Merit can delay the punishment of curse-causing water. But she will not bear children and she will not get better. If a sota who is innocent drinks the water, not only does she survive, but she is even blessed. She becomes strong and healthy. Any illness she might have is cured. She gives birth soon afterward. She gives birth with great ease. And the children to whom she gives birth will be more handsome. As the Torah says in Bamidbao, chapter 5, verse 28. And the Gemara Misechet Sotah, page 26a. And the Rambam in Echot Sotah, chapter 3, Alecha 22. But if she is guilty and it is her merit that protects her from immediate death, she obviously does not receive these blessings. Ela mitnavena veolechet. Rather, she wastes away gradually. And in the end, after one, two, or three years, depending on her merit, she dies from that death of the sota. Her thighs, her thigh collapses and her stomach bloats, as it says in Zavah Bamidbar, chapter 5, verse 27. Since the health of a guilty woman declines immediately, the fear of the water will remain strong and innocent women will not be slandered. And that is the end of Mishnah Hay. Now the first mission of this chapter stated that the Sotaz Mincha is transferred from a non-sacred basket into a sacred service vessel. When still in the basket it has monetary sanctity, Kiddushat Damim, which means that it is the property of the temple but it is not sacred enough to be offered. Upon being put into the service vessel it gains inherent sanctity, Kiddushat Daguf, which renders it fit to be offered. When the husband designates the barley flour to be the minchat kinaot, it acquires only monetary sanctity. In this regard, a mincha is different from animal offerings, which become inherently sacred as soon as they are designated. Something with monetary sanctity can be redeemed with money. When an item that has monetary sanctity is exchanged for money, the sanctity of the item is transferred to the money, which must then be used to buy a replacement for the item. But this is not possible with something that has inherent sanctity. This Mishnah teaches what happens if the Mincha becomes Tameh and therefore disqualified during either one of these stages. Nitmet minchata ad katsha bakeli. If a Mincha became Tameh before it was sanctified in the service vessel, Hareib kechola minachot, it is like all other Mincha offerings that become Tameh before being sanctified in a service vessel, which have only monetary sanctity, vitipaden, it can therefore be redeemed with money. If it became Tameh after it was sanctified in a service vessel, it is like all other Mincha offerings that became Tameh after being sanctified in a service vessel, which have inherent sanctity, and so it must be burned on the pile of ashes in the courtyard. Once a Mincha offering is placed into a service vessel and gains inherent sanctity, it can no longer be redeemed, it remains sacred forever. Should it then become Tamer disqualified for some other reason, it must be burned on the pile of ashes in the courtyard where other disqualified offerings are burned. The Mishnah lists several other cases in which the Mincha Sota becomes useless after being put in a service vessel and must therefore be burned on the pile of ashes in the courtyard. These are the Sotas 
whose mincha offerings must be burned on the pile of ashes in the courtyard. Ha'omeret mea nilach, one who says to her husband, I am defiled and therefore prohibited to you. V'shebahu lahedim shit mea, one about whom witnesses came and testified that she was defiled. V'haomeret enishota, one who says I will not drink the water. Now she must have said this before the writing on the parchment was erased, because once the writing is erased, she is forced to drink the water like we learned in Mishnah 3. V'shebala ena rotzel ha'ashkota, one whose husband does not want her to drink the water. And and one whose husband cohabited with her on the way to the court in Jerusalem. The mincha of the sota is offered only if she drinks the water. So in each of these situations where she does not drink the water, like we spoke about in chapter 1, Mishnah 3, her mincha is disqualified. Therefore, if it already has inherent sanctity, it must be burned on the pile of ashes as the Mishnah taught earlier. Another case in which the mincha must be burned on the pile of ashes in the courtyard, the Choren Yisrael the Kohanim, all sotas who are married to Kohanim, in Choten Yisrafot, the mincha offerings must always be burned on the pile of ashes, even if they are not disqualified, even if the mincha of the Kohen's wife did not become Temen, its kumitz has already been offered on the altar, and she is willing to drink the water, the remainder of the mincha is to be burned on the pile of ashes in the courtyard. The reason is as follows. Whenever a Kohen brings a Mincha for himself, all of it is burned on the altar, unlike the Mincha of a non-Kohen, of which only the Kometz is burned on the altar and the rest is eaten by the Kohanim. A Mincha brought by a Kohen for his wife, such as Sotaz Mincha, belongs to both of them. It belongs to him because he paid for it, and it belongs to her because it is offered on her behalf. On the one hand, since it belongs to him, all of it should be burned on the altar like any Mincha of a Kohen. On the other hand, since it also belongs to her, all of it except the Kometz should be eaten by the Kohanim and not burned on the altar. The law is that the Kometz is burned on the altar, but the rest of the Mincha, which may neither be burned on the altar nor eaten, is burned on the pile of ashes in the courtyard. And that is an Abotai of Mishnah Yomi. Baruch Adonai Amen Amen.